they're sexy boots, but they don't want Mary J. Blige. I have a special guest with us now, as you guys know, reporting from her truck. Hey, Rachel, how are you? I'm ch- I'm good, dude. I'm the queen of sexual anarchy. Are so. you the queen of sexual anarchy? <laughs> did you? At least get, I used to be. You did know? you get a chance to watch the Super Bowl? <laughs> I did. I, are you kidding? What kind of yeah. fucking red? What kind of question is that? You know I'm a true blue, red blooded American. Good, good, good. But did you did you check out the halftime show or or, or did you? Are you just you couldn't kidding? handle all the sexual anarchy, dude. Oh uh, no, I feel so. I I feel so. Um, I, I'm never gonna recover. I'm, I'm. You know, you can ban all the books you want now, and now I know all about sex. Right. Well, you know, you've already read these books, apparently, but your 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 great buddy, Charlie Kirk, kind of blew up um, on the Internet uh, on Twitter by by saying and, and I don't really understand this. I can't figure this out. I don't know what part some people are saying it's because there was shoulder shown. Some people are saying that 50 cent was in the tank top um, is the reason why is the reason why Charlie Kirk just couldn't handle all the sexual anarchy that was happening. Can you, out, can you can you figure out what what the sexual anarchy was that he's seen? Because I can't figure it out. Yeah, you know, I want to remind everybody: Charlie Kirk's twenty eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, the motherfucker grew up on Victoria's Secret catalogs and that Angel commercial. I mean, so you tell me, Tony, what could it be about those individual skin that they were showing? That might have sparked Charlie's outrage. I, I don't think it was the butt cheeks, dude. Right. Well, you know, you know, it it does seem it does seem a little far fetched to me that uh, Charlie, I'm a Nazi Kirk, you know, as I call him, um, would would be so 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 offended by the this Super Bowl halftime show, which is hilarious. He's like he's like a, a 90 year old man in like a like a 20 year old's body, right? Yeah, I gotta tell you, I'm really lucky. I'm like so old. I remember when Janice, jo- uh, uh, when uh, what's her name's uh, Janice boob Jackson, popped yeah, out. Mm-hmm. Janice Jackson's boob popped out, and the scandal. I mean, Charlie, shit, he wouldn't, he'd have to get therapy if that happened. If he saw titty, he'd black maybe, titty. maybe, right? maybe, maybe the maybe the titty <laughs> affected him in a certain way, and he just. <laughs> He, he suppressed some of those memories with the therapy that he got. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's know. like conversion type therapy or what. I don't what know. But created. man, if I had time and my name was Gabe Sanchez, <laughs> I know I'd be making a water boy shout out about movies with that. I'm just oh saying. My God. It is. <laughs> it is absolutely insane that that <laughs> this is this is where their messaging is that they think that like the thing that's going to speak to millennials and even like Gen Zers is that hey we can't have rappers singing 25 year old songs and they act like these are like new songs and like new artists like these these people are in their 60s that were no singing shit. at the halftime show <laughs> this isn't like what are you ta- like, like let's it, talk about that by the way like what the fuck are they drinking up there down there in Hollywood Tony because like well, I want to look like that when I'm sixty for sure. Well, you know, I was talking about this because Snoop Dogg and and, and here's the thing. And of course, they're really fucking their butt hurt that he was smoking, as if they just found out that Snoop Dogg smokes weed, which is really fucking weird. <laughs> it's really fucking weird that they're like, oh, he was smoking weed. Like he's fucking. When doesn't he? He's Snoop Dogg. Like dude, he's constantly smoking. It weed. takes a lifetime pot smoker to pull off threads like that purple fucking suit he was rocking, dude, right? That sweatsuit. No, no one sweat, else could dude. show up. No one else could show up and do. Yeah, a half no. in Super Bowl in a sweatsuit. Like I had to go out and, like, I had to go out and like rap Macklemore right after that, you know? Because right. like, those threads are sweet, dude. Come well, on, dog. Speaking of that, like Snoop Dogg, you were saying something must be in the gin and juice because Snoop Dogg, like he looks the exact, me and my wife were talking no, about this. When he looks exactly like, you can tell Dre is aged, right? Uh, Mary J. Blyde, she, she's aged uh, 50 cent as aged. Same with Eminem, but Snoop Dogg looks the exact same as he did 30 years ago. Like he, I don't know what it is. And Tony, you'd be proud to know, like, you know, when you give an every man like us, like, you know, access to a good Rolodex, I start using that shit. So whenever I talk to someone from Hollywood, I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing up there, man? Right. Like, what is it? Give me some of that shit. I want it. I want to look 20 years <laughs> younger than I do right now. What's, as I yeah, get older. <laughs> that's right. What's in the gin and juice, Snoop Dogg? What's it must be the chronic. That he's smoking. It has to be. That's, yeah, that's, that's what they're so upset about is he smokes the weed. He looks that young. So, yeah. 
So let's go because I know I know everyone wants to know strategic outrage and everyone thinks that this is kind of like a joke how we clown them. But this really is part of their messaging. Like Charlie Kirk just got off a really bad week where he lost a big fundraising um, for his Nazi Academy. uh, Excuse me, his uh, his his America First Academy, where he's trying to indoctrinate children like they're, they're really trying really hard to get a lot of rich people involved into doing the thing that they accuse the left of doing, right? Of indoctrinating yeah. kids. Um, um, and this is part of their. So is this like, do you think like this is his way of messaging to young people? I mean, I can't yes. figure this shit out because Ben Shapiro's on this train this morning too about the. Yeah. Ab- no, no, about no, 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 listen, that's because like the CRT myth, mm-hmm. you know, that they're going to wedge in the fall, like right. a component part of that is porn. Okay. So like, yes, there's race. They're going after all of these black authors, right. but what they're, what they're, what they're hiding their racial, racial motivated shit behind is this idea of sexual in the endo. Right. So like, they feel like if they, what they're trying to do is set up this entire frame that like, you know, Democrats want to, poison your children and turn them into hedonistic, you know, drug using party, um, you know, sexual deviants. Right. And so like that, there's like, there's nothing that comes out of Kirk's timeline, Shapiro's timeline, that chick, Sarah Ishgar on uh, George Stephanopoulos' show that I watched Mm -hmm. yesterday. When they get on TV, when Chris Christie gets on TV, the dude has a fucking mission, dude. And that's a messaging mission. Right. It's not to go and have a conversation. It's about to get shit done. Right. So when Charlie Kirk sent that tweet out, I immediately recognized a, a, a part of this component attack on education to come privatize and make Nazi ac- academies. And if somebody doesn't make that point to these suburban parents, oh, you know, this is what they mean. They want to make Nazi academies for kids, to right. turn them into little kitchen breakfast narcs and, you know, have a police state like we're, we're going to be in trouble. So, you know, because they really are so good at, at, at making a messaging garden grow. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, they've done this for years with with the sex and the video games. You know, it's always the same old shit that they recycle. Right. And it's always it's always to get back to this uh, us and them. Right. Whatever that means. And it's 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 to make sure that there's a superior person and, and how that superior person is going to react to certain parts of culture. Right. And, and, and I think it's interesting that you make you make the point that they they're trying to make the the older the older artists, black people performing at the Super Bowl, some kind of sexual thing, which honestly, when I watched it, like especially the most sexual parts, which Mary J. Blige had on like the night, the, the high boots. And she was beautiful. She was beautiful. Yeah. She did a fantastic job. But you compare that to. To Tucker Carlson talking about how they took the sexy boots off the Eminem. Like those two things don't fucking match. Like, what are you talking about? You can't have one and not the other. And then you think, well, what is what else is, is the sexual, the sexual anarchy? And you go to the 50 cent part of it because that w- when he's singing his song, there's a lot of uh, women dancing around him that has short shorts on. They have like tank tops on. But like you go every back, Super Bowl show in history, right? Okay? But if you, but if you actually go back and you look at the the official music video for that song, those women are way more scandally dressed no than what were dressed during that halftime show. And I don't, I don't think that it was intentional or unintentional or Pepsi or the producers of the halftime show's part to make it sexual or non-sexual. And I, I don't, I don't think that really played into what they were trying to do with the show, right? Like. That, that wasn't the overall theme. The theme was, hey, there's a lot of fucking millennials between the age of 28 and 40 that are going to fucking love this music. Oh, shit. And, and they're going to be dancing in their living rooms, and their children are going to be looking at them and go, why are you dancing like that? Like, <laughs> like that was the goal. It had nothing yep. to do with sex or yep. anything. It, it, was, it was to sell Pepsi to millennials. That's <laughs> what it was about. That's what and it was about. Advantage, dude. I mean, I would hope and I mean it's killing it on the DLs today on Apple. I'm sure that that album's gone viral because I think a lot of these youngins have never heard that. And this that's is right. Good, you know, that's so, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, but, but it, people need to understand, Tony, about entertainment. Let me just make this clear. Because when I found this fact out, I, I was like, I, and nothing shocks me, but this shocked me. I was watching one of those histories of the 80s shows on CNN. And it was talking about MTV, and I, you know, I kind of remember when MTV first became available, at least to us. But like, that was a little bit late. Like they they started the germination seed in the seventies, 
And Michael Jackson could not get on MTV. When they when he first wanted to be put on MTV, the executives were wary about including a black artist right. in 1980-ish on MTV. Michael Jackson, guys. And, like, of course they ended up doing it, right? Because you get Thriller and Bad and all these great um, MJ videos out of the deal. But they had they were hesitant because they thought white America will bulk if we have a black artist on this. And now it's 2020. It's 40 years, guys. Like, you know, so it's not that I'm still alive. <laughs> right. So this is in my lifetime where they were had a serious conversation. So here's the thing with Kirk. If that had been, you know, what's her name? Carrie Underwood. And she had boobies bouncing. And she should yep. have a kick mm-hmm. pop out and he'd be fine. Right. right? Well, yeah, absolutely. He's just he's just trying to utilize. Look at the scary black folks and their sec- sexual gyrations, you know? Well, I mean, I mean, you, you go all the way back. You, you said um, uh, Michael Jackson, who's known as the king of pop. You go back to what they know as the king of rock and roll, who is Elvis. Elvis, Elvis was gyrating, and they hesitated to put him on TV because of it. But it was much better for him to sing black music because Elvis sang black music yep. and put him on TV as a white person singing yep. black music than the black people singing the black music because they couldn't do that either, right? No Even shit. Way back then. So, like, this is part of this whole shit that they're trying to stoke, this fascist shit, this right-wing shit. Um, and I, I agree with you. And I think it's not to be ignored. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're amplifying their voice. You're giving them credence by talking about them. Like, you have to clown them. You have to show America that this is what they want. They, they want- yeah, and guys, if we don't talk about their crazy, no one else is going to do it for us. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is insane to me how many racist white people, and I'm not, because uh, I don't think what Charlie Kirk said was overtly racist. He definitely has the racial undertones, like you're saying. But there were people on Twitter, like, just being outright, just straight racist. They did not care. I don't know how many accounts were probably banned yesterday uh, after the halftime show, but there was probably a lot of accounts suspended for saying the shit that they were saying. And I know. In. But but the, the, the crazy part to me about this is that they're okay with black guys playing on the field and cheering for the black guys on the field playing the football game and that in, kind of entertainment but they're not okay with black people singing during the halftime show. They're not okay with that kind of entertainment. And I, I'm just wondering well, what people. Yeah, listen, Tony, you've, you've hit something really important there. Okay. Because it's that, it's that intervening variable of team. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, they're okay. They'd be fine. If we brought out some black artists that like, you know, we're Republican. I'm sure there's like one of them on the D list somewhere. <laughs> like that, like, you know what I mean? Like Obama. Right. Like there, right. the like the backlash to Obama is racial, but it's conditioned on not being on team, right? So this right. in group, out group hostility, and that's why you can have successful people like Herman Cain or whatever, right? So like when we talk about racism, like we're not talking necessarily and not often talking about the kind of virulent um, racism that that was the stasis of the nation through the 60s okay what we're now talking about i would call is is more unconscious or implicit types of racism that condition how we see shit and we would have seen all white people do the same dance you wouldn't heard shit from charlie kirk about it right well and and i've made this point before that i think people need to understand about fascism because we've talked about it me and you on this show and and we've talked about it privately even that when fascism comes, you won't have the NFL the way you see it. There nope. won't be the NBA. There won't be entertainment the way that you know it. Like, they, fascism will try, not only try to get rid of black artists, but try to get rid of all memory and you being able to listen to them at all. Like that music that you heard and you love and you love to dance to, the fascist will try to make sure that you do not have access to any of that. And we see it in the book banning. We see it in the book banning. We see it in Charlie Kirk. That fuck trying to have Nazi schools to where they erase all semblance of of black culture because that's what they do is well know, that's they, what they did in, in I mean in Germany what really made the shit notable that they did with the Nazi party as it rose into prominence especially driven by Goebbels who was a once in a lifetime and he's an evil genius but he was a lo- once in a lifetime like Elon Musk kind of level innovator and right. what his innovation was was psychological. Pr- manipulation through propaganda at a grand scale right and so like you know in in terms of 
of um, like Germany's aims. They did not just aim to set like a fascist regime into government. They thought the culture of Germany was headed down the the pooper because it was the roaring 20s. People are drinking. Women are starting to have sex outside of wedlock and start to (laughs) ask for more political freedom. In fact, they enfranchised women right before the rise of the Nazis. Okay. So like, you know, the, the wiping of culture, when they took an, um, the museums, they whipped out all of the impressionist art from these museums, put in only Nazi approved artwork. Really people, I urge you to go read the uh, beast garden of the beast by, um, um, Oh God, what's his name? He, Eric Larson. He wrote, uh, also wrote uh, splendid in the vial on Churchill. Great way to understand when this these changes start to come and some of them are already are coming we're watching them come right now you're going to understand like why we're in a crisis and the biggest crisis of all is getting people to see the crisis well and i i think even this trucker convoy shut down the economy type shit i think this plays into that message as well even though it doesn't like how in the hell can can sexual anarchy play into that shutting down the economy like well what do you think anarchy is like they're for anarchy they're just not for the sexual type. They want anarchy. We want to shut this down. We want to shut, which is really funny because they've been bitching about supply chains and opening up the economy. Now, now the goal is to shut it all down. Hell yeah. They, they want to win shit, right? So how do they win shit? They keep inflation and they can complain and, and be, uh, you know, call Biden, Biden inflation, right? I mean, we know, I know exactly everything they're going to do in the fall, exactly how they're going to do it. And we have to meet this moment with fire. So what fire do we give? Let's talk about the fire, because I think that's important to not just to have the conversation about what their message is, but how do we not not just combat it? Because we need to combat it, but we also need to have something of our own to make sure that that our quote unquote propaganda, that's always a bad word. But our propaganda, our message is with, filled with truth, but also getting a, a, a message out there that applies to all these situations. Because for him to call uh, something that happens sexual anarchy, he's blanketing this message, right? Because he, he can say that and it blankets anything because we're like, what the fuck does that mean? So we need to make sure that we're doing this where we have this national blanket message that can be applied to any issue and yep. make sure that it's in a way that is pro-democracy and anti-fascist. So how do we do that? How do we combat them, but also have our own message of pushing it out there and, and getting that strategic outrage as we talk about? It? Yeah, I mean, the real thing is replication, right? So like right. they have this decisive in- infrastructure advantage in their right-wing media ecosystem, which is much more than Fox. It extends into local press, local newspaper, local TV. I think she lost signal. That that is, but there how do you replicate or get around or deal and work with what you have, right? And what we do have is a lot of media that is currently not centralized, not focused on attacking the Republican Party or highlighting the Republican Party's crazy, wants to spend their time having substantive debates about interesting and, and really critical policy. And what I'm telling people is we all need to practice strategic outrage and understand that if you have a platform of any type, you're also influencing others. And you can use that platform to shape language, get people to stop calling it a trucker rally and call it something else because it's not truckers. It's right. A, it's it's an know? insurrection. It's an insurrection. <laughs> it's an insurrection rally. They're trying to overthrow it's the government. sabotage, right? So stop. I mean, anytime the, and, and the media loves this like convenient shit. So like Jan 6 instead of the Republican Party's ongoing and and, you know, multifaceted coup plot, right? Right. Uh, trucker instead of, you know, um, anti-vax, you know, white support. I mean, these are Nazis at these things, right? right. <laughs> so like they, you know, if you serve them up something like trucker rally and then everyone will tweet it, everyone will talk about it. We're not, we're he- not helping ourselves in that. Right. Because, because we're, we're using their message to try yeah. to form our message, which yeah. is exactly the opposite of what we need to do. Um, no because doubt. speaking of Nazis in this, this trucker, this trucker thing in Canada, the, the crazy part to me is GoFundMe is like, nope, you cut off. We, we know what you're doing. And, it, and it's not funded. It's not funded by people in Canada. It's like 90% of truckers in Canada are actually vaccinated. That's why they don't have to actually have a mandate, which they're bitching about something that doesn't exist. And the reason why they doesn't exist, because they don't need it. Like when right. over 90% of people are vaccinated, you don't need a mandate. That's not a thing right. that you need. 
because it's a it's a done deal at that point. I mean, yep. you're talking about less than 10 percent. Who gives a shit? Like, go go do what you want to do. You, you know, you don't have to drive a truck and go do something else. No, they they're don't not protesting that. the policy. Dude. That's right. Right. No, I mean, that's just a, that's just the bullshit excuse. Right. Right. That's I mean, the that's sexual that's anarchy. That's, that's the sexual right? anarchy component yeah. of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the little message, the little nugget that they need. To, to cause chaos to try to have an insurrection and overturn democracy because right. that's really what they're attacking at this point is they're not attacking the economy they're not attacking supply chains they're not attacking the mandate they're not they're really attacking democracy and it's these 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 other actors out there that definitely do not like democracy that don't want it here don't want it there they don't want it anywhere because right. democracy breeds anti-fascism right like it breeds it like that's that's what it inherently is, is anti-fascist when you have democracy. So but they're trying to overthrow these governments. But more than anything, they're trying to spread this message that democracy bad. Democracy doesn't give you good things. Democracy give you bad things, like is the message that they're trying to send. So how do we how do we as pro-democracy people to fight back on Putin's message? Because that's where all this trickles down from. That fucking guy. I mean, Jesus Christ, we have the entire fucking Republican Party being Putin's puppies here in America, act, acting as if, oh, well, if Putin wins, that that's a Biden loss. So that's good for a geo, horrible for America. Horrible yep. for America. Horrible. Don't care. They don't give a fuck at this nope. point because fascist state better, better... That That is what our goal is, no matter what. Even if we have to support a foreign actor who would definitely, definitely be our enemy in any other circumstance. We have to be his friend because it, it, it gives us the power to overturn Biden's tyrannical, whatever the hell they're talking about. Whatever exactly. the hell they're talking about. Yep, exactly. I mean, that's pretty much it, Tony. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we don't have we don't have a big ass media system that we can set uh, on one wheel and have it hum. But we can replicate it as best as we can by teaching people the importance of language, specificity in language, when you're bitching about Congress, what you mean Republicans in Congress, better say Republicans, dude. Right. Average person doesn't understand why gun control isn't passing, why climate change isn't passing. They think it's you. They think it's us. Right. We have to tell them you don't have the shit you want because the Republican Party is blocking it and they intend to do worse to you. I think you tweeted out uh, several days ago, and I'm going to get this completely wrong, but you said basically the energy needs to be turned around of, of Democrats didn't get anything done, that it's Republicans' fault that Democrats didn't get anything done. And we need to turn that message in and aim that message that direction very quickly for the 2022 midterms. Um, you know, I, I, I say so many times to people that, you know, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are not running for Senate. They're not running. There's not a race in their race this this cycle so to to con continue to bitch about them is not going to do any good we can go win ohio we can win florida we can win those seats and that's that's what the message is against um cinema mansion if you want to have it let's go win those seats that we don't have and increase our majority in the senate um because democrats are the only one that are going to deliver voting rights at this point we watch every single republican vote against them because they want to destroy our right to vote they want to destroy women's liberty i mean they want to destroy everything for that matter Senate was cuckoo because like you know for i mean look at mark kelly right i mean he's in the same state he's a democrat too right mm -hmm. being a democrat do doing just fine right right so exactly she had no electoral incentive to do what she was doing, and nobody has any idea what the hell she her calculus is. But when it comes to Mansion, dude, people think, oh, Mansion doesn't want to do it because he's got coal money. I mean, I'm sure all that shit matters, dude. But at the end of the day, you take Joe Mansion and put him in a Biden 35 state, he's voting yes on climate change shit. Dude. That's right. Okay, he, so he did, he'd have done busted mansion, the filibuster, is what yeah, you're the saying. The reason you don't have mansion is the same reason you don't have any of the shit you want, people who are listening to my voice right now. And that's because of the Republican fucking party. The Republican party divested itself from governing the nation about a decade ago, mm -hmm. figured out they could still win elections regardless because of better marketing and um you know how they campaign and they've never looked back right so like when they come into a congress in 22 when they came in 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 um you know in the past their objective is to is to use their power to thwart your agenda in every possible way that they can if that means stealing a supreme court seat fine that means canceling democracy 
fine. That's who you're up against. You're not fighting Democrats. You're not fighting corporations, lobbyists. You're fighting Fascist. the Republican Party. And it is time that we all put our full trained, you know, verbal arsenal towards that goal. Right. Well, because I, I think if we don't, we if we don't have this strategic outrage to make sure that Democrats can deliver to, to prevent Republicans from destroying our democracy, um, we won't save it. So it's very important that we aim it in that direction. And I think we have a lot of good things working for us. Um, I, I think I think there's a lot of good things happening out there, but we have to stay focused. We can't just say, oh, well, everything's going to fall into place. We have to continue to push. We have to stay pissed. We have to go fucking vote. And, and I don't just mean mark a ballot. I mean, we have to get engaged um, in these races and do that thing. Um, yeah, so- and I argue that we should help people get to that moment and feel that way by a right. full-on napalm of the GOP. I mean, we should prosecute the Republican Party on climate change. First off, it's their, like, oil and gas shit that killed the environment. Then when they found out they were killing it, they decided to m- invent climate change as a hoax, mm-hmm. right? And that was all lobbyist money. And it was the same people that did uh, d- doubt about smoking and cancer. OK, that's who brought you climate change as a hoax. That's not organic either. That was a strategy that they financed, deployed and did. And it ended up turning like there was never like not a partisan divide in environmental data. Now it's like this. OK, that's mm-hmm. what they did. And they because of that and their continued obstruction, even as the emergency has become much more obvious, uh, you know, th- these this future generation, Gen Z, Gen Millennials, they need to understand we didn't get here by accident and we're not getting out of it unless we roll over the Republicans. Right. Well, because that's the only option that we have, yep. because the they're, not, they're not they're not they're not going to stop. They're <laughs> no not going to stop never gonna go for that shit. Never. Dude. Right. So you either have to get them out of the way or, you know, just don't expect shit. You can't do shit with this government unless you have enough votes in the right places to do it. And, you know, like I said, Joe Manchin is the last Democrat that will ever serve in the state of West Virginia. Okay. Because he has to get 30 people, you know, almost 30% of the Republican vote to survive in there. Right. So and no one can get that shit. Like 10% is the cap. So Manchin getting that extra 20% is a function of Manchin himself. And once he's gone, that will completely turn red and it will not elect a Democrat, at least without another historic realignment um, intervening into American s- politics, which cyclically could happen in 50 years. But in the, in the meantime, that West Virginia, you can't primary Joe Manchin. He, he doesn't, he's afraid right. of Republican voters, not you. <laughs> right. Right. Well, that's why he's doing what he's doing Yeah, because he has to get the vote. Right. I no mean, shit, to, dude. To be a Senator. He's 30. He's- it's a 35 plus Trump state. Right. Yes. It, it, it is West Virginia. It's I mean, like 70, it was 65, 35 or 70, 30 or something like that, dude. You know, you know, before we go, but I, I want to ask you one more thing about uh, January 6th and some of that. But uh, speaking of the, the West Virginia, doesn't it doesn't it floor you that the messaging that that Democrats could have to attract what would be known as conservative voters on issues like people in West Virginia, they want decent fucking wages. Like they don't want to go bankrupt because of a fucking healthcare bill. Like they want, they want decent jobs, right? Like they they want their families to have a decent way of life. They don't want to be fucking broke. Like the exact, that's the exact opposite of the Republican message. Somebody's got to come in there and say, look, Republicans have been controlling your shit for 20 years. Where's all your shit? Right. right exactly. You have less. Oh, wait a minute. You have less than you had 20 years ago. What right. a surprise. Let me tell you what they did to steal all your shit. Okay. Like that's the kind of messaging you need. You can go into West Virginia all fucking day and say, oh, look, this provision of build, build back better polls at 60%. Well, then repoll that West Virginia audience and then pop in. Democrats want to do this. Republicans want to do that. And you watch that support plummet, dude. Right, so right. It's true that they want that. But unless you understand the power, the intoxicating power of hyperpartisanship, you are never going to be able to get that through to that audience. And that brings me that hi- hi- hyper partisanship brings me to some of the news that is coming out of the January 6th with some of this um, seditious conspiracy. We've seen the Oath Keepers. Um, they were having a fucking conference calls, apparently, uh, to plan to plan this thing. Yes. Uh, 
and 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 everyone's wants the January sixth select committee to arrest people like right now, which is not how it works. Um, but but in and I've been saying for several weeks and even months that hey, the January sixth select committee is going to tell a story here, and if Democrats and you out there, Democratic voters, do it correctly, we can actually use that as a message of what they're going to do with our country if they take yeah. back power, right? Like. All the things they wanted to do that they were not successful at, they are going to try to do again. And I, I think it's important for people to remember, because I did an interview um, with Tasha Adams, which is the exchange ex-wife of Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers. I also, his son joined us, his oh, exchange yeah. son. And their their view of it was, is that the Oath Keepers kind of did a 180 for Donald Trump, right? Like their entire organization was in the exact opposite direction of what they actually did with this seditious conspiracy. And a lot of it was to protect Stuart Rhodes himself. Um, it has a lot to do with the Bundy Ranch. And I'm hoping I can have um, him back on. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that these people were willing to go against their entire, their entire life's work of beliefs to maintain power for this, this idea that one authoritarian could give them what they want. Like, this is fascism 101. This is the sexual anarchy shit all rolled into one. And we can actually use the story that January 6th Select Committee is going to tell over the spring and summer as it a little by little by little. Like, we can let the American people know who don't know now. I have a friend of mine the other day, Rachel, I was talking to him about the White House destroying documents and like, what are you he talking about? Yep. What are you talking yeah, about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Enough. I keep yelling at Twitter. I'm like, dude, normal people who even vote have no fucking idea any nope. of these headlines. And if nope. we don't find a way to tell them what has happened and force them to see it. Right. Okay, so that distribution and isn't something you can just, you know, we'll, we'll just dial it in. Fuck it. You know, no, we got to get them to look. We got to get them the information, get them to look. OK, right. and this is no small task. So I'm going to close out by saying this. You're absolutely right. Getting Liz Cheney to run that committee, Adam Kitzinger, they're running that shit like a Republican committee. Except for it's a Republican committee for the first time with an actual scandal to investigate. Because keep in mind, usually they're just making shit up. Right. So like in this case, the meat is just as rich as the politics. And Liz Cheney is counting on somebody to be there to hit the ball that she's going to serve up once these committee hearings start. Our system is not geared to hit the ball. And that's why you see me every day on Twitter yelling, hey, we've got to get this shit fixed and we got to do it by April 1st. Right. Well, and I, th I think we got good opportunity and we can do this. Thanks for reporting from your truck today. What kind my of what favorite kind of, place on earth, dude? Yeah, my it, place. It, it was, <laughs> I, I really I, I wanted Rachel on Mondays. It's kind of a thing we've been doing. So <laughs> I appreciate you joining us even from your truck. And we'll have you back next week to talk about whatever these fucking psycho fascists do over the next weekend, because they always seem to serve us up the, the ease of messaging over the weekend. Yep. Um, as, yeah, we, oh, as, God, as our audience noticed, we certainly don't lack for material to work with. Tony. No, That's all absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> Rachel, thanks for stopping by. Yep. We'll see. We'll see you next week. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to bring you in maybe next Monday as well. If you're not too busy, thanks, Rachel. Uh, every, everyone, stay here. We'll be right back. What the fuck is wrong with you people? It's a rhetorical question at best. We'll be right back on the Tony Michaels Podcast. Headline! Under President Joe Biden, the American economy adds 467,000 new jobs in the month of January. Thanks, Brandon. Fuck 'em, fuck 'em, fuck 'em, fuck 'em, fuck 'em, fuck 'em. We're back to the Tony Michaels podcast.